welcome everyone. It's confetti time and I'm JD Witherspoon. And guess what? Tonight, I have a special guest. He was the runner up in the hit reality show, The World's Most Amazing People Who Do Things You Can't Explain. And here he is. I am the baffling Darren. <sighs> baffling Darren. Welcome to Confetti. Okay, okay. Impress me. JD. I want you to think of a card. Any card at all, but don't tell me. Uh, got it, got it. Okay, now, what was the card? Um, the King of Hearts. Okay, JD, see if you can find the card in the deck. <gasps> okay, uh, oh, all right, huh? Oh, wow, uh, it's the only card that's not here. <gasps> How did you know I was going to pick that card? <gasps> well, maybe it's luck. But where is that card? JD, do you have a favorite sport? Um, basketball? <laughs> oh, see? There it is! Ah! Uh, that's amazing! That's an amazing magic trick! <gasps> well, it's not magic. It's illusion. Ah! I can't wait to see what he does next. <laughs> oh, magic or illusion always gets me. And hey, Thank you all so much for joining us. You know we're here live Monday through Friday at 9.30 p.m. Eastern, 6.30 Pacific. And guess what? Tomorrow night's show is a celebration of Father's Day, everyone. Yes, yes. So get your dad, uh, your estranged dad, your, I don't know, life-size dad doll, and tune in to play for $20,000. And hey, starting this Monday, guess what? We have four straight nights of all games episodes, everyone. Yes, instead of regular trivia questions, we're asking questions inspired by some of the fun games that we have cooked up. And with that, let's get into it, shall we? Now look, if you watch The Bachelorette, you know that Luke P told Hannah B that Luke S was not there for the right reasons. And if you don't watch uh, Bachelorette, that is, then you are so lucky. I have to watch it, my wife loves it. Now look, uh, Dave Chappelle Live is coming to Broadway, everyone, for five shows from July 9th to July, uh, is it 13th or 23rd? The 13th, and tickets haven't gone on sale yet, but guess what? They're already sold out. They're already sold out. Yes, I'm serious, don't even try. Ugh. The merch is sold out too. Ooh, and uh, you know Jennifer Aniston? Well, she says that Ross and Rachel would still be together today. <laughs> um, wait a minute. They are, aren't they? I mean, go to Netflix. They live there. They literally live there. Friends is always on. Oh, thank you so much if you're here for the first time. Thank you for checking us out. Make sure you have the most up-to-date Facebook app on your phone, by the way. And you know what it is. If you are still glitching, try switching from data to Wi-Fi. And at the end of the game, hit follow on our page for news and updates on special episodes. Now look, your friends may help you win cash on the show because as you play, you can see each other's answers in real time. So tap share at the bottom left and invite all the friends that you want. And if your friend has never, ever played before, when they accept your invitation and play the game for the first time, you both earn a free life. And if you haven't already heard, let me tell you about the VIP High Five. When you play five games of confetti, you'll earn a free life. It's easy, right? So in other words, if you play an entire week, Monday through Friday, then look at that. You'll earn a free life and you don't even have to play your five games in a row. That easy. Now, if you have a free life, you can keep playing if you get one wrong and still get a chance at big cash. So invite as many friends as you want to help you rack up as many free lives as you can. But only one free life can be used per game and it won't save you on the final question. So check our show page for all the details on how free lives work, everyone. And all right, I'm going to ask you 10 questions that get harder as we go, and you have 10 seconds to hit your answer. Get all 10 right, and you'll get a share of the cash prize. And tonight's cash prize is $5,000, everyone. $5,000. Now, if you get one wrong, don't worry. Your game isn't over. You can keep playing on your screen and help your friends with your correct answers so they still have a chance to win a piece or all of that 5000 and after tonight's show, we'll be giving out a confetti clue in our confetti official fan group. So check it out after the game and join the group, why don't you? Now with that, let's see what's going on in the chat. Ooh, we got 
Janie, or Janie, I wanna say Janie, who's here and says, can you give my husband Donald a shout out? Donald, of course. A shout out to you, my friend, a shout out to you. Uh, Deborah's in the chat and says, hey JD, can you give me a happy birthday holla? Or excuse me, can you give a happy birthday holla to Vanessa, please? I love confetti. Uh, Vanessa, happy birthday holla. And uh, also Deborah, thank you so much for playing the game. Uh, Kathy's in the chat as well saying, JD, please shout out my son, Michael, and tell him I love him. Michael, a shout out to you and your mom loves ya. Yes, Kathy that is. All right, uh, Stephanie's in the chat and says, hey JD, can I get a shout out for one? Stephanie, of course, a shout out to you, a shout out to you. Uh, Lori's in the chat and says, can my husband get a shout out please? He's a trucker and hasn't been home in a while and I miss him so much. Yes, of course, shout out to your husband and a shout out to you, Lori, thank you for being here. We got Kara in the chat who says, a shout out from Mansfield, Ohio, from me and my girl, India. We are ready to confetti. Great. We got Letitia in the chat who says, a shout out to myself for playing every night. Shawnee is here and says, please shout out my big sister, Brooke. I love you. Brooke, Shawnee, thank you for playing. I love you too. I love you back. Uh, Kimberly's in the chat and says, a shout out to my cousin, Shemaine, Shemaine, for loving confetti as much as I do. Shemaine, Kimberly, thank you so much for watching. Thank you. Uh, we got Deborah M who says, may I please get a shout out, JD? My mom's, or excuse me, it's my mom's 93rd birthday. Wow. Deborah M, shout out to you and shout out to your mom. Uh, Greg is in the chat and says, I'm actually really awesome. And my mom says so. That's great, Greg. Thank you for the information. Uh, we got John in the, sh in the chat that says, a shout out to Team Skeddy. <laughs> and JD, we love you when we play every single night. Thank you, John, and Team Skeddy. Thank you so much. Uh, we got a few more of these. We got Diane in the chat who says, a shout out to our birthday girl who's six years old, Harley. Harley, hey, shout out to you, Big Six, that's awesome. Hey, we got Jenna here who says, a big shout out to me, please. I always comment and never get a shout out, Jenna. Big shout out to you. Uh, Andre's in the chat and says, JD, I've been on here consecutive nights and have yet to get a shout out to my beautiful wife, Shay. Could you hook a bro up? Hey, Andre, I got you. Shay, shout out to you. And thank you both for participating in the game. I appreciate it. We have next uh, Patrice on the board and it says, shout out to all the great fathers. Keisha's in the chat and says, a shout out to JD for being the best host ever. We got Brianna who says, a shout out to JD for being a great host and my mom for getting me addicted to this game. Hey, shout out to your mom, of course. And also, last but not least, we got Christy in the chat who says, a shout out to my niece, Holly. It's her first time playing. Thank you all for playing, that's awesome. And with that, let's get ready to confetti. <laughs> Here's your first question. Which of these is an old time term for someone that you love? Apple of my eye, peach of my appendix, or mango of my lower lumbar? Now, while you're answering, here are some other old time terms and phrases you may remember. I'll just fax that to you. When did this song become classic rock? I'll just print the directions from MapQuest. <laughs> Map quest. Wow. That is a throwback. All right, now, mango of my lower lumbar and peach of my appendix are cute. They're cute terms that don't actually exist, which means apple of my eye. Apple of my eye is the correct answer. And how old is that term? Well, it goes all the way back to the year 885. And that's Game of Thrones prequel old, everyone. Game of Thrones prequel old. And with that, we got 20,516 players who knew that old expression, but the game is still very young, everyone. And with that, let's move on to question number two. Which of these is a real brand name candy? Milk Dugs, Despondent Patch Kids, or Laffy Taffy? Now, an LA Times food critic released his candy bar power rankings, and Take Five took the top spot. Payday was at number three which is questionable. I mean, it's covered in raw peanuts. To me, that's a salty snack, not a candy bar. Look, don't at me. Don't at me in the chat. All right, now, you're probably not going to be surprised when I tell you that Despondent Patch Kids and Milk Dugs don't exist. 
the only real candy here is Laffy Taffy. Laffy Taffy, everybody. <laughs> Laugh it, taffy. Eh, eh, eh. All right, I'm done. Look, uh, although you, you might not be laughing when it takes the fillings out of your teeth. Seriously. See a dentist, everyone. Now, look at this. We have 19,475 players who are off to a strong start. And let's keep up that strength, okay? Here is question number three. Which of these is not a TV show on the CW? Riverdale, Supergirl, or NCIS. Now, in case you tuned in late, just a quick reminder that tomorrow's show is a special Father's Day episode. We're celebrating all the dads out there with a game worth 20 grand, everyone. So please, bring your daddy to, to tomorrow's show, please, all right? Now, if you want to see the much darker exploits of comic book favorites Archie, Jughead, and Veronica, on Riverdale, then uh, you would like to tune into the CW. So, is the Supergirl, is the Supergirl, is that how you say it? Is the Supergirl TV show traveling like a speeding bullet on the same network? Uh, yes, it is. So that means NCIS is not on the CW. NCIS is the correct answer. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I usually put my phone on silent. Oh my goodness, hey, where, where's my phone? Where is it right now? Oh my. I have it, JD. Me, the baffling Darren. Oh my goodness, now that's a good trick, Bree, Bree D? BD, what's up, dude? Well, it appears that you're a thousand dollars short for tonight's prize. Really? Hell, no, not really. I know how generous you are. So I've opened the online check -out. Don't know you. Did I ever figure that out? Hmm. JD, what month did you get married? Um, October, but do not give out my pin. Everyone's watching. October, the 10th month. You also love basketball, and I bet you love the Lakers. They've won 16 championships, haven't they? No! Let's give 10-16 a try, and bada-boom! <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we have all the money we need. Now, was 1016 the magic number? Or is it all an illusion? I can't believe he just told everyone my pin. I'm gonna have to change that right after the game. Ah! But I can't leave you all, so let's move fast. What's next? Okay, let's see how much you know about sports. All right, here it is. Question number four. Which design, excuse me, fashion designer, who was a competitive figure skater, was design, excuse me, has designed Olympic skaters' outfits? Stella McCartney, Vera Wang, Zach Posen. You heard me, right? Now look, in fashion news, Vogue reported that Sam Smith wore a showy disco outfit while gardening this week. And uh, by reported, I mean they took his Instagram post and turned it into a 150 word article, which is actually pretty hard hitting journalism by today's standards, so good on you. All right, now I think we all agree that figure skaters have extremely stylish outfits, but which ex skater became a huge fashion designer? Well, the clue that we posted in the official, in the official Confetti fan group said, the answer's not Volkswagen, but it is VW. Because those are Vera Wang's initials. Vera Wang is the correct answer, everyone. Yes, she designed outfits for Nancy Kerrigan and Michelle Kwan, among others. Wow. Look at that. We got, whoa, 14,116 players who still have a chance at prize money. And some of that is mine, uh, thanks to baffling Darren. <laughs> okay, here's the next one, question number five. Typically, in what direction is the tip of a stalactite pointing? Up, down, or either? Now, stalactite, stalactite. You know, that's a, that's a fun sounding word, right? Almost as fun as squeegee, squeegee, <laughs> which is the word I repeat in stressful situations. Hmm. Maybe I should try stalactite the next time I feel stressed. Hmm, it's good to try new things, right? All right, now maybe you've never heard of a stalactite. Well, it's a formation you'll find in a cave that might be made 
of many different materials, and they're closely related to stalagmites. You know, I remember uh, in school, they taught me how to remember which was which. The teacher said, stalactites are holding on tight, and that's because they form on cave ceilings with the tip pointing down, down. Down is the correct answer. <laughs> and you know, I never believed that information would be useful until I wound it up hosting a game show, I guess. Wow, there it is, teachers, they're great, nice. All right, well, looks like we've got 8,636 players who have answered all five correctly. And now is my favorite time of the show. It's where we show you a video on your phone within the game that you're already watching. So uh, take a look. Ooh, are there any players tonight still wondering about a career path? Well, consider becoming a mime artist. There are a lot of bonuses. Black is a slimming color, and you'll finally get to prove to your parents that they won't really support you, no matter what it is you want to do. Okay, well, then uh, this next question is about a phrase that inspired the title of a 1975 film series. Here it is, question number six. What phrase did legendary performer Marcel Marceau use to describe mime, the craft of memory, the science of imagination, or the art of silence? All right, well, uh, it only just occurred to me that for people who play the game with the volume off, I have been performing mime for them for almost a year. Oh, nice, all right, that's another special skill that I can just throw on my resume. <laughs> cool. All right, so Marcel Marceau performed professionally, everyone for over 60 years and is easily the most famous mime artist. Now memory isn't the most important part of being a mime, so the craft of memory is wrong. And it does require imagination. Imagination. <laughs> but Marceau obviously didn't think that was as important as being quiet because he called it the art of silence. <laughs> It's correct answer, yes, silence, there you go. <laughs> the art of silence is the correct answer. And, wow, we're down to 7,307 players who are less silently playing a perfect game. What's next? Hey, hail to the chief, nice. All right, looks like it's time to ask you a question about a US president, so let's check it out with question number seven. Where was Richard Nixon when he famously declared, I am not a crook? Disney World, National Zoo, or Plaza Hotel? And hey, a quick heads up, next week we have four special All Games episodes. And we're giving every question a fun, gamey twist. So come in, you know, come by and play. Uh, unless you have a scheduled medical procedure or your child is graduating from college. Th those are the only two acceptable excuses, for me at least. All right, so in 1973, Richard Nixon said his most famous quote, I am not a crook which ironically made everyone think he was 100% a crook. Now, Nixon's quote was a response to a question from the Associated Press at their annual convention, and that took place at a resort hotel at the happiest place on Earth, Disney World, everyone. Disney World is the correct answer. Oh, I can't even hit the note right now. I kinda lost my voice, but hey, I'm sure you guys didn't lose out on that question because you, you, you party fouled it. Oh no, oh Ooh, no. Damn. <sighs> Somewhere out there, Mickey Mouse is laughing at us all. All right, well, uh, looks like a lot of you thought it was the Plaza Hotel. Ooh, it's all good though. Share those answers with your friends, your family, your loved ones, your uh, unloved ones. I, I don't know, but hey, maybe a free life saved you. I hope so. And after seven questions, we've got 3,798 players who still haven't made a mistake. You're getting close to the end, so let's keep going with question number eight. What game board is in Bosch, excuse me, is in both Bosch's gardens, Garden of Earthly Delights, and Bruegel's Triumph of Death? Chess, cribbage, or backgammon, everyone? Bruegel, Bosch, gardens, earthly delights? These words, I tell you. Now, speaking of art and board games, Parker Brothers commissioned jewelry artist Sidney Mobile to create a 23 karat gold plate in Monopoly board complete with diamond studded dice? And it costs $2 million? What am I reading? What? Why? 
why a $2 million monopoly set? If I was going to spend $2 million, why would I spend it on a game that takes 2 million hours to play? Monop monopoly, I'm sorry. I know you bring families together, but it's not that you're not worth it. I just... Monopoly, I just, I'm just not that into you. Anymore, at least. And also, $2 million is just crazy for a board game, okay? I'm not gonna talk about this anymore. What? Two million? All right, hey, what's up? Let's get back to it. All right, time for me to explain uh, the, 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 the answer. Pretentiously, of course. Both Bosch's 15th century triptych and Bruegel's painting. Uh, can be seen in the Prado Museum in Madrid, and they both contain similar moralizing themes. And if you look closely, <laughs> you'll see they both contain a backgammon board. Backgammon! Backgammon is the, is the correct answer. Yes, yes, but I'm sure that didn't go over your tiny little heads. All right, let me know if I need to work on my pretentiousness <laughs> uh, skills, uh, pretentious skills. Let me know, let me know in the chat. If I was pretentious enough, I think I was, cool. All right, so we've got 1,991 players who have made it almost all there. I can't say words that are on the screen in front of me. You guys have made it almost as far as you can go up the confetti game board. There it is, JD, good job, all right. But hey, you're not there yet, now you're not. <laughs> More pretentiousness coming this way. Uh, here we go, question number nine. Which of these elements was discovered by U.S. researchers most recently? Hassium, astatine, or curium? Now, this is a great place to do another plug, another plug, everyone, for my fictional restaurant, The Periodic Table. Yeah, and guess what? This week's special is our mercury buffalo cauliflower, and with each order, you'll get a manganese meatball parm at half price. Come through to The Periodic Table. Now, uh, astatine was one of the first elements discovered by U.S. researchers in 1940. Hassium was discovered in 1984, but not by Americans. Well, how about curium, huh? It was discovered by a team of Americans, everyone, in 1944, which means curium, curium is the correct answer. Yes, it is. And I'm curious to know how many players we have left. Oh my goodness, 560 players are one question away from discovering if they're going to win tonight's game. Oh yeah. What a boom <laughs> Oh no, wait a minute. Uh, what, what else have you got up your sleeve? Baffling Darren. The, the Baffling Darren, I am the Baffling, Never mind. Uh, JD, do you have any summer plans? Uh, uh, well, I, I don't know, nothing major, maybe probably just gonna hit the beach a few times. I don't know. Ah, the beach. Well, you'll need some money for those trips. This paycheck will help, but I can't process it without your social security number. No, 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 no. I am not giving you my social security number, please. Well, if you won't give it to me, maybe some beach equipment will help. <laughs> oh, does this number look right? Baffling Darren, please do not get out my sister. No, he's an identity thief, everyone. Get out of here, Baffling Darren. As you wish. Uh, JD, uh, do you have a Netflix password by any chance? Leave, leave already. Fine, lighting cue. <laughs> oh my goodness. I, I have to cancel all my accounts, all of them. Thank you, Baffling Darren. But you know, not before. We get to your final question. Here it is, your final question. A band whose name was inspired by a label on a home appliance created which Hot 100 charting song? American Idiot, Highway to Hell, or With or Without You? Now, I, I don't have a band, but if I had to name one, find inspiration from the questions we ask on this show. For instance, I think Stalactite would be an awesome band name. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure if they'd be a, a power metal band or, or uh, do Debbie Gibson covers, but still a great name. 
A great name, I say. Okay, now, let's see. Green Day Sings American Idiot. The name of their band is plant-based, not product-based. Now we're left with U2, who sang With or Without You and Highway to Hell performers ACDC. You know, ACDC stands for Alternating Current Directing Current, which was suggested by the sister of two of the band members because it was written on her sewing machine, and that means Highway to Hell is the correct answer. Did you get everything right? Was that Highway to Hell question a gift from the heavens? Well, if so, then that means you're taking home some everybody. How many win we have tonight? <laughs> oh, goodness, look at that. 300 answered all 10 correctly, and you're taking home $16.51 a piece.